Okay, let's work through some um, conversions where we have to use multiple conversion factors. So we've got a couple of questions, two questions we're going to work through, but remember that we're using this process, what I want equals what I have times what I know. This process of dimensional analysis where we work out a calculation all the way across the page is um, really useful for chemistry as well as for any science or um, or, or math program that you're in. And the trick here is to recognize that now we're going to have more than one conversion factor that we're going to need to plug into our calculation. And we're going to plug those conversion factors in going across the page so that we have one long calculation. And it's a great way for us to keep track of our units, cancel them as we go, and also let the units guide us to tell us which way we should put the conversion factors in so that we get the correct answer. Okay, let's go ahead and do some, some um, calculations. And as we do them, we're going to also add an extra step in, and that's going to be making a plan. So we're going to, either above or below our calculation, we're going to include a plan for converting what units we have to the units that we want. And I'm only going to include this extra step uh, as I find that it helps a lot of students in setting up their calculations and knowing what conversion factors to put in first. You might choose not to use the plan when you do your own calculations and that's fine. It's just a tool for your toolbox. So let's go ahead and start with a calculation, a question here. We've got Cynthia is following a recipe that calls for a dash of paprika. Her cooking conversion table states that one dash is equivalent to 0.125 teaspoons. She doesn't have a clean teaspoon, so she decides to use a tablespoon instead. If one tablespoon is equivalent to three teaspoons, how many tablespoons of paprika must she measure? Okay, <laughs> real life question. So start off with what we want is equal to what we have times what we know. I'm going to keep what we know. Remember, these are our conversion factors. I'm going to... Uh, write it in red just so that we keep it separate from the other information. Okay, so the first step is to figure out what do we want. Let's look at this, uh, this question again. Essentially it's asking us how many tablespoons she needs to measure for a paprika. So there's what we, what we want right there, number of tablespoons. So let's put that in. And I'm going to use the abbreviation tablespoon TBFT. That's a common abbreviation for tablespoon. Okay, how many tablespoons is what we want? What do we have? Well, her recipe calls for one dash. So that's what we have. This is really our starting point. This is what she needs to convert. She needs to get into units of tablespoons. So the next step is to think about what we know. This is going to be a conversion factor that we put in uh, as a fraction, but First, we have to figure out what conversion factors we have from this question. And I'm going to write them over here on the side. And let's see what our question gives us. Her cooking conversion table states that one dash is equivalent to 0.125 teaspoons. Okay, let's go ahead and write that as a conversion factor. I'm going to write it as a statement. So it's one dash is equal to um, point let me just move that over a bit. Sorry, folks. Give me, give me a little bit more room. One dash is equal to uh, 0.125 teaspoons, and I'm going to use the abbreviation TFT for teaspoon here. Okay? There's one conversion statement. She doesn't have a clean teaspoon, so she decides to use a tablespoon. If one tablespoon is equivalent to three teaspoons, there's our second conversion factor that we need. So one tablespoon, T-B-S-T, is equal to three teaspoons. So three T-S-T teaspoons. There we go. Okay, let's make a plan. Some of you might not need to do this. It might be obvious to you what you're going to do first. But in case it's not, let's make our plan. In a plan, I always start with, when I, what, what's my starting point? So here, and I apologize, I need to go back to my uh, calculation here. I, I wrote have in twice, and I should have wrote 
Sorry, I should have wrote one dash. I know I said it, but I didn't write it. <laughs> there we go. So I'm starting with a dash. And in my plan, I need to get to tablespoons, but I'm going to write it over here on the far right-hand side because I know I can't do that in one step. So I need to leave some room. So if I look at my conversion factors, there's no uh, statement that relates dashes to tablespoons directly. So I'm going to first have to use um, one dash is equal to 0.125 teaspoons. So I'm going to have to first go from dashes to teaspoons. There's my first conversion. And then I can use that second conversion factor and go from teaspoons to tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead in my plan and actually just bring down, if I can do this, I'm going to try to bring down my, my conversion factor. I'm going to put it right underneath. Okay, so when you do this in your calculations, you might choose to do this, right? Your plan right at the bottom, and then you just plug it right into calculations. Okay, and there's my second conversion factor. I'm going to put it right under the arrow. Now, the only thing I need to think about when I do my calculation is which way to put the conversion factor in. What do I want on the top? What do I want on the bottom? Everything else I've already got ready to go here. Okay, so step one, I'm converting dashes to teaspoons. I need to cancel out of dashes, so I need to take my one dash, and I'm going to put it on. Um, I'm going to put it on the bottom, so I'm going to write one dash down here. Okay, and the 0.125 teaspoons needs to go on the top. Good. Before I go on any further, I'm going to cancel out of dashes, cancel my units as I go. And the next step is to convert teaspoons to tablespoons. Again, I'm using that conversion factor down here at the bottom. I could probably even pull it right into my calculation if I wanted to, but I'll write it again. So I need to have the three teaspoons on the bottom because I need to cancel out of teaspoons. In fact, I can cancel them right away. And I need to put that one tablespoon, the other part of my conversion factor on the top, and I'm ready to calculate. So I use my, my calculator and it's going to be 1 times 0.125 divided by 3. I really don't need to multiply and divide by 1. It won't change my answer. And it's going to come out to 0.0416667, like this, so I'll say 167 um, tablespoons. That's a 1 there. Okay. So always including my units in my answer, and I'm going to box off my answer like that. In, in, in the next um, series of lessons, we're going to talk about significant figures and how to decide how many decimal places to keep in your answer, but for now it's fine. Um, we're not too worried about it. We're just going to leave enough digits here, okay? So that's fine. If you had reported 0.042, that would be fine for now as well. Let's do another example of, of a, a multiple unit conversion. Here is one. It says a toy airplane can fly three feet per second. Given that 5,280 feet are equivalent to one mile, what is the speed of the airplane in miles per hour? Okay, so again, we start with our what I want is equal to what I have times what I know. And the first step is to determine what do I even want? What am I trying to find here? Well, it wants the speed of the airplane in miles per hour. So there we go. Miles per hour is what I'm looking for. And what do I have? I've got, I've got a few pieces of information. I have, uh, I do have a speed right here. It flies three feet, feet per second. There's my, that's really the speed that I'm working with. So that's what I have. But uh, maybe before I decide that for certain, I'll read the rest of the question. Given that 5,280 feet are equivalent to one mile, okay, the second piece of information, the second piece of data that you're given in this, uh, this question is really a conversion factor because it relates two units, feet, to miles. So I'm going to write that over here to the side as a statement. So I've got 5,280 feet is equal to one mile. Okay, good. There's one of my conversion factors that I'm going to need to use. And now I can put into my, my um, calculation what I have is 3 
feet per second. That's my initial amount. And I'm going to have to convert it now. So I'm going to need at least one conversion factor. But obviously, I'm going to need more than one because the one I have is only going to convert me from feet to, to miles, which will help me in the numerator. But you can see in the bottom there, I need to get from seconds into hours. So I am going to need a second conversion factor. I need to know what is one hour equal to in seconds. You might choose to use two steps for this. You might convert seconds to minutes and then minutes to hours, and that's fine. I'm going to put it together, and I'm going to say, well, there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 60 is equal to 3,600. So I'm going to just combine two conversion factors into one here. Okay, but again, you could do it in, in two steps. So you could have three conversion factors for this calculation. That would be fine. I'm going to use this one. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. Okay, so I've got my two conversion factors ready. Uh, it actually, I'm going to make a plan for this one just to, to, um, to help us out. But I'm going to make a little note here. Sometimes, particularly when you have to convert a rate where you have units on the top and the bottom, so in the numerator and denominator, sometimes it doesn't matter what order you, co you convert units in. Uh, this is a good example of that. So whether I choose to convert feet to miles first or seconds to hours first makes no difference. You can just choose where you want to start here. So I'm going to choose to, to convert the numerator from feet to miles first. So my first plan is to go from miles, pardon me, sorry, from feet per second Okay, into, well I'm first going to convert the top part. I'm going to convert to miles, feet to miles. So I'll still be in per second in my denominator. Okay, uh, and then the last step is going to be convert to convert from seconds to hours. So my final units will be in miles per hour. So I'm converting there on the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and spread this out a little bit here for myself. Okay, and then I can actually pull my conversion factors right down here, right above my arrows. And then my plan is ready to go. So the first thing I said I was going to do is convert my, um, let's put this down, move it down a little bit. So as not to um, confuse your calculation. My first step will be to convert from feet to miles, and then I'm going to convert over here. And the second step, I'm going to convert from uh, from seconds to hours. So there we go. Okay. So I'm ready to go ahead and, and put that into my calculation. So the first thing I do is I say I need to get out of feet and into miles. I'm going to be using this conversion factor right here. But I need to make sure that, that the units of feet is on the bottom of my conversion factor so it cancels with the numerator. So I've got 5280 feet going in the bottom of my fraction, and one mile is going to go in the top. And right away, I cross out my feet, I cancel those units. Next step, I'm going to convert from seconds here, and I want to have um, hours on the bottom. So I need to make sure that when I take my conversion factor here, I'm going to put my 3,600 seconds in the numerator on the top, and my one hour is going to go on the bottom, and I right away I cancel out of seconds, and you can see that the only units I haven't canceled are miles per hour, so I'm ready to calculate. So I do this in my calculator. I've got 3 divided by 5,280 times 3,600, and my answer is going to come out to I get 2.045, uh, if I round it there, miles per hour. Again, at this point in Chemistry 11, we're not really concerned with how many decimal places we're leaving for now. Just leave it. You can leave uh, you know, two or three. It's fine. We are going to learn about significant figures very soon, and then we'll learn the rules on how, where we need to round our answer. Great. Give some of these multiple unit conversions a try yourself. Good luck.